Beauty and history surround us. Platte River flows through and around. We wear state fair as a crown. But Douglas is a railroad town. Yes, Douglas is a railroad town. If it weren't for the railroad, this town would not be here. It all started back in 1886, you know, the, the building of the depot, the laying of the tracks, and I'm glad that the railroad at the time decided to say, hey, we're gonna move the town a little bit further east, you know, and build it there because there's more room. To some, we're considered flyover country, but for those of us more grounded, the city of Douglas in Converse County, Wyoming is rich in Western history, worth seeing and touching. You can get right in, you can see some of the stuff, you can get up close and personal with it as opposed to being, you know, having to be staying back at arm's length. The Railroad Museum and Visitor Center is a perfect example. If you use just a little imagination, it's easy to drift back to a time when rail travel was all the rage. The railroad was a part of life back then. People would actually make it a, an event to travel on the train. They'd dress up in the nice clothes and you know, they'd actually sit there and talk to people on the train and say, hey, how are you doing, stuff like that. Nowadays, people don't. Value of rail transport in early days Douglas cannot be overstated. They'd bring their cows or sheep or whatever, all their produce or whatever. They'd bring it to the depot, the big red depot across the street, and it would get put on the trains to go over wherever it needed to go. You know, back then they didn't have trucks like they do now. So everything in the town depended on the railroad. You know, the new supplies would come in, all the other stuff would go out. People would, they'd, they'd gather around here, and this would be the visiting place in town where they'd get all the news, you know, where they'd do their telegraph messages and stuff like that. You know, the depot was the number one important building in town. Now, with newly appointed exhibits and historic photography, the Railroad Museum and Visitor Center appears ready to issue travelers rail line passes, sending them from Douglas to wherever they want to go. Stuff like this doesn't exist anywhere hardly anymore, and it's nice that we have it here so people can enjoy it just as much as I do, you know, and they can bring their families here and say, look, here's a real train that used to go down the tracks, and now, you know, it's somewhere where it'll be taken care of. The steam engine, one of only four like it in the country, draws the most attention. It took almost two weeks to move to its present location from across the road at the state fairgrounds. That thing is so iconic. It's so, I mean, you just look at it and you see the power in it. It was a big responsibility running one of these. You know, you gotta keep the speed up, you gotta make sure that you're on time, you make sure that your freight is okay, or the passengers, passengers too, and keep this monster of a machine rolling down the tracks without hitting anything or making sure that all the parts are good. You know, everything is, needs to be in precise working order for it to go. If carrying passengers, they could ride comfortably in a day coach, the dining car, or in a sleeper, all of which are open during business hours in our park. I think probably the majority of the people when they came across, they had a little hard, wooden bench and they may have kept their luggage on their lap <clears throat> uh, and they got out that way. So you got first class, you got coach, right? So same sort of thing with the, with the railroads. Trips, whether short or long, did not always have happy endings. In fact, the worst train disaster in Wyoming history in death toll terms occurred in Converse County in 1923. Nearly half of the 66 total passengers lost their lives. It would cruise about 80 miles an hour down the track. That was the average speed. If they had to stop, they would throw it in an emergency, and that would basically lock the wheels up, but it would continue, all that force would continue sliding. It's about a mile and a half for it to stop. The vast majority of railroad travel was relaxing and reinvigorating. There's something romantic about riding in a train car that you don't get anywhere else. The Railroad Museum and Visitor Center in Douglas is truly unique. There's no fences around it, and they can come up to them and see just how big they really are, especially the locomotive. 
I mean, this thing is 16 feet tall, you know, and I'm tiny compared to it. Restoration of all the park's attractions is going to require considerable investment. There's a devoted movement in Douglas to treasure Converse County's rail heritage and preserve it for a long time. Douglas is proud to be home of the jackalope, and there are many spots around town to see them, at least mounted ones. Evidence is considerable and convincing this animal was conjured up in Converse County. There's other, other communities that, like anything good, uh, they try and claim it, but uh, back in the 1930s, the very first jackalopes were discovered out here on the prairie east of town here in Douglas, and, uh, and, and they're, they're a rare critter. They don't show up very often, but uh, we, we like to claim them and we hang on to them. You drive through Douglas, you're gonna see them down on the bridge. Uh, you'll see their likenesses on the bridge and you'll see one here with the trains, one another one downtown. Um, they're, they're quite the critter. Shy, rarely seen live in the flesh horned bunny, they do tend to get aggressive if under the influence of alcohol. You can distinguish females from the males easily. Males have antlers like, um, like a deer and so the, the 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 ones you see on the wall behind us these are all these are all males the females have horns like uh, a uh, like an antelope and so that's kind of how you can tell the difference there is a jackalope hunting season but it's short it's only one day a year you can get licenses here in douglas and that one day a year is always on june 31st so that's that's the only day of the year that you can go jackalope hunting Smile. Right after statehood, there was a group of folks who got together and they would come to the state fair every year and they called themselves the old timers and they would talk about pre-statehood. You know, they'd, they'd come and they'd reminisce and they would uh, uh, they'd do show and tell, they'd bring in different things, you know. And uh, that group eventually became what we now have as the Wyoming Pioneer Association. And that's where everything in this museum initially came from. Uh, they brought stuff in, they donated it to us. Uh, we have uh, trophy saddles from the very beginning of the State Rodeo. We have fantastic art. These things bore witness to history. With these new lights, uh, when we put these in, there were things that we'd never seen before, we'd never noticed. Uh, people have been trying to get better lights in here forever. Part of the reason with the new lights is they're LED, so they out virtually no ultraviolet which damages things they put out no heat which damages things so what we have is I think of is, is a pretty wonderful eclectic collection kid friendly you know I have three kids if we could catch a fish how big is our fish gonna be what do you think um, how big is it how big is it gonna be big, big, big. is they put restrictions on so many things and they make kids feel scared um, instead of just dealing with it as it comes, I guess. Um, but here it's, you see lots of kids running around all the time and so I think that gives parents a sense of ease of, oh, they're gonna be okay. Does it feel good? Does it feel hot out? 